Last time, we integrated our hot chocolate GraphQL application with a database. Now, whenever you integrate with a database, you have to start thinking about your application's performance when executing queries against the database. Are we executing queries too often? Are our queries not optimized? Are we overfetching data? And this is definitely a big problem in GraphQL because sometimes we suffer from something called the n plus one problem where we make one query and then we get a bunch of results and say it's a list of results. Well then for every item in that list, we have to make another query. So if you get n items back from the list, you're gonna have to make n more queries. And in GraphQL, we solve that with a data loader. So in this video, I'm gonna make some performance adjustments and we are going to integrate a data loader to make our queries more efficient. So first off, I wanna head into the courses repository. And what I did last time was I included all of this data. So what this is telling NED framework to do is to execute joins on the instructor table and the students table. But what if I query for a course and I don't ask for that data back? Well then I'm doing this join for no reason. So for this demo, I'm gonna get rid of these joins. So let me just clear those out. And all we're gonna get back is the courses. Now this is kind of weird because we're returning this course DTO and it has properties for the instructor and student and they're gonna be null. So ideally I would just remove these, but I can't do that because I'm using all these DTOs to describe my NED framework schema. So these describe the relationships between my tables. So I can't remove those. So ideally I would map this to like some other object where I didn't have those properties. But anyways, we're not going to be including that data. It's gonna be null and same for get by ID. And that should be everything we have to change here. So now let's head into our query. And as you can see, whenever we get a course, we're grabbing data from our course DTO which has an instructor DTO, but this instructor DTO is gonna be null. So we can't really do this. Let's just, let's just get rid of that. And same for get course by ID, let's get rid of that too. So now our course type is going to return null for the instructor, which is okay if we're not querying for the instructor, but if we are querying for the instructor, we're gonna get an exception because we can't allow this value to be null. Plus we should return the data because the client is asking for it. So what we're gonna do is fetch the data in our course type. So we're gonna open this up as a resolver and inside here, we're gonna hit our database and get the instructor back. So essentially what we're doing is only fetching the instructor if the GraphQL client is asking for the instructor. So no overfetching, but we are gonna have to hit our database again here. So let's actually implement that database logic. I'm going to put this into a service. Let's put a new folder in here. I'll call this instructors. And similar to how we had a courses repository, we're going to have an instructors repository. There we go. And in fact, I'm just going to copy some of this stuff from my courses repository because we're going to need this DB context factory. And even some of these methods are going to be the same. So I'm just going to copy everything from get by ID up to the context factory field and paste that in my repository. And let's go through and rename everything, import everything we need. So all good here, constructor that takes our context factory. And then we're not gonna have a get all method. We're gonna have something similar in the future, but we are gonna have a get by ID and this is gonna return an instructor DTO. We're gonna pass in an instructor ID. We'll create our DB context and then we'll take our instructor's DB set on our DB context and we'll get the first instructor where their ID matches the instructor that we pass in. That should be all good for our repository. This is all gonna change once we implement our data loader to optimize our data fetching. But let me head into my startup.cs and add the instructors repository and import that. And now we're ready to use this repository to fetch the instructor in our course type. So we're gonna need our instructor repository passed into our resolver. I think having it as a parameter and using the service attribute is gonna be the easiest way to do this. So we don't have to have a constructor and pass that in. It'll just get injected into this method by hot chocolate. So we'll take the instructor repository. That's what we want as the parameter here. And this is now gonna have to be an async method because we're hitting our database. And all we're gonna do is take our repository and get an instructor by ID and pass in the instructor ID and return that from this method. 
but the instructor ID, we don't even have that. How are we gonna get that? So essentially what we have to do is pass the instructor ID on this course DTO from our root courses resolvers down to our course type resolver. So the way to pass data down to our nested resolvers is actually defining a field on our course type that we can use in this resolver. So we want the instructor ID in this method. We're just gonna define a property for it. So a property, it's gonna be a good because it's the instructor ID. We'll call it that instructor ID. Now, since this instructor ID is just a property that we're using to pass the ID down to this resolver, I don't really want this as part of my GraphQL schema. So I am gonna have a GraphQL ignore here. So it's ignored from the schema because if they want the instructor ID, then they can just query for the instructor. Actually, now that I think about it, if they want the instructor ID, why not just let them query that so that they don't have to query the entire instructor? So on that note, maybe we can just leave it as part of our schema, don't have to ignore it. But anyways, now that we have the instructor ID as a property on this class, we can pass that to our get by ID method on our repository inside of this resolver. And we get an error here uh, because I forgot we have to do our mapping so this returns an instructor dto and we have to map that to an instructor type so this mapping is pretty straightforward all we have to do is instantiate our instructor type and pass in all of these properties so the id comes from our dto and i think we got three other properties on here first name last name and salary grab those out of our dto i really wish i had auto mapper set up. We're going to do that eventually. But anyways, now we're ready to demonstrate the n plus one problem. So I'm going to put a breakpoint right here in this instructor resolver, and I am going to hit the query for all courses. And let's see how many times we hit this breakpoint. All right, so first I'm going to create a bunch more courses. So try and get some more data in my database. They all have the same name, but that's fine. Just want to demonstrate this. And now we're gonna get all courses. So let's execute that. All right, so we hit a breakpoint in our repository. We're gonna get the instructor and oh, the instruct. Oh, I know what happened. So the instructor ID is just an empty GUID because we never set the instructor ID on our course type. So we never set this property. The way we need to do this, we have to actually pass that instructor ID down. That is gonna be in our courses query so we're gonna have to set the instructor id to the instructor id that we get back from our course dto's and same thing for our other resolver down here let's try this again whoops wrong property name here fix that and let's get courses all right so we hit the breakpoint the instructor id was set that's better so let's continue all right so this is the second time third time fourth time fifth time sixth time seven all right, so seven times, I think, we hit the database. So that explains the n plus one. So hitting the database n times for the instructor of a course, and then hitting the database one more time just to get all the courses. So ideally, I don't want to do this. I want to hit the database once to get all the courses, and then hit the database just one more time to resolve all the instructors that I need for the courses. So the way to do this is to use a data loader so that we can batch all the instructor queries into just one database query for all of our courses. So data loaders are actually built into the hot chocolate package. I think it implements the data loaders using a sibling package called green donut, continuing the little name theme we got going on here with hot chocolate, strawberry shake, etc. Anyways, let's create a new folder in our project for data loaders. I assume you could put this in your services folder too, but I'm just going to drop it in a new folder. And inside here, we are going to have our instructor data loader. So create that. And we're going to inherit from batch data loader. So that makes sense because we're batching all of our queries for instructors into just one request to our database. And this is a generic type. It takes a key type and a value type. So the key type is going to be a GUID because we're querying for instructors by ID and the ID is a GUID. So that is our key. And the value we're getting back is our instructor DTO. So import that and let's implement this class. And we also are gonna have to generate a constructor to pass down to this base class. 
So let's do that. And then this class is also going to have to use our instructor repository because obviously we're going to have to hit our database to actually get our instructors back. So let's get a field for that going and just resolve that in the constructor. So add that as a parameter and now we're good to go. So this is going to be an async method because we're going to hit our database and we get these keys passed in as a parameter and these keys represent all the instructor IDs that we want to batch query for. So we are going to pass all of those keys to our instructor's repository. So instead of get by ID, we'll have another method that can take multiple keys and we'll call this get many by IDs and just pass in our instructor IDs. So we're going to get back an I enumerable for all the instructor DTOs. So now let's generate this. So this is gonna be async. I guess I should have awaited that method in our data loader, so it would've generated all that. But anyways, we're gonna take our DB context again. So let's just paste that in there. We're getting our instructor IDs passed as a parameter, and we're gonna use these to get all the instructors for these IDs. So obviously, instead of first or default, we are going to use a where clause here and we only want the instructor if the instructor's id is inside of our instructor ids list here so we want to check if the instructor ids list contains the instructor id and then we'll execute that query with to list async so this will do the batch query for all the instructors so we should only hit this once to get all of our instructors now back in our data litter, let's actually use this. So we're gonna have to await this. And now all we have to do is convert these instructors to a dictionary that maps the instructor ID to the instructor. So that's super easy with some link. We can just take the instructor's I enumerable and do a to dictionary. And the key for the dictionary is gonna be the instructor ID. All right, that is epic. So let's go into our startup.cs. We're all done with our data loader and we are going to register this as scoped so the instructor data loader and now that is registered let's head back to our course type and we are going to get our instructor data loader resolved in here and we're going to use that data loader and that has a method to load async so load async takes the id of the instructor that we want to load so when we hit this resolver like seven times, n times, or whatever, the data loader is going to batch all of the queries for the instructors into just one query. But this method also takes a cancellation token. So let's just pass in an empty one. So we can do cancellation token, import that, and just specify none. And then the other thing I wanted to point out before we try this out, which is super exciting, is that you can also pass in a list of keys right here Obviously, we don't have to do that now because there's only one instructor, but we would definitely want to do that if we wanted to batch load these students. We would want to pass in all of the student IDs into this load method. Although I don't even think that would be efficient based on our schema and how the student's relationship is set up. Let's finally run this. Let's start the API. Let's execute this. Let me put one more breakpoint in the instructor resolver and let's execute. All right, so we're hitting our data loader. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we are hitting our database to get all of the instructors for all of our courses. So instructor IDs, there's only one in here. And I think that's because all of our courses have the same instructor. So this actually isn't gonna be as fun as I thought. But regardless, we're only hitting our database once to load all of our course instructors. So let's continue. Oh, we timed out, okay. But that's okay, let's run it again. Let's see, only hitting the database once all right, there we go, continue. One hit on the database and we get all of the instructors back. So yeah, we only have one instructor. Maybe we can add another one real quick for fun. So another instructor, Sean Singleton, 100 salary. Let me just copy this old ID, paste that in here, change it around a little bit. Let me copy it as well. Let's save this table, I think we're good. Let's put a breakpoint back in our repository. Let's start this. We're gonna have to create a new course that points to our other instructor. So we can do that, set the instructor ID. There we go, created. And now let's get our courses. So hit that breakpoint and we got two instructor IDs now. So we batch load all of those in just one database query. And there we go, got back all of our data. So we've solved the N plus one problem 
instead of n plus one database queries, we now have one database query to get all the courses and then another single database query to get all of the instructors for the courses. So just to summarize, in our courses repository, we removed those joins on the instructors and students table. We didn't really have to do that. I feel like the joins would definitely be more efficient than making two separate database queries. So one for all the courses and one for all the instructors. But still, if we're not querying for the instructors, then this is definitely gonna be faster now. I guess it's all kind of like a trade-off. So if you don't want the instructor, then now this is faster. But if you do want the instructor, then it's gonna be slower because we have two queries. Regardless, I just wanted to show off data loaders because sometimes you just have to use a data loader. Like what if our instructors were in a completely different database or on a completely different API, then joining the data on a database query wouldn't even be possible. So we would have to use a data loader in that case. Anyways, I'm just rambling at this point. So we removed the joins on the course's query and now we query the instructor in a resolver. I also demonstrated how you can pass data from one resolver to a nested resolver using a property, which you could also ignore from your schema if you wanted to, and then demonstrated the n plus one problem, which we eventually solved by creating our custom data loader that batches a request for all of our instructor IDs into just one database request. So hopefully you can apply this to your own application so that you're not hitting the database n times because who knows, n could be like a thousand. Definitely want to use a data loader. Anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member, link in the description. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.